A really important part of search is figuring out how to rank the results that a search engine finds. So I've crawled the internet, I've built these search indexes that allow me to find all the pages out there that have to do with cats, for example. But how do I figure out which are the most important pages that have to do with cats? Because those are going to be the ones that are going to be at the top. Pages that don't make it onto that first or second page of search results really, for a lot of cases, might as well not even exist because no one's going to find them. If you search for cats, you're going to click probably on one of the first links on one of the first pages, unless you're really into cats, like Greg, in which case you're going to click on a lot of the links on the first page and then keep going and going, and he's probably into like the 17th page of search results, right? Because cats are really interesting. Um, but so it's really important that search engines get the most important results at the top. If I put the most important results at the bottom, no one is going to find them. What they're going to do is they're going to click on links on the first page. Those links are going to take them to websites that aren't very good. They're not going to find what they're looking for. The website's not going to be about cats. It's going to be about dogs. And they're going to say, this search engine is terrible. I'm going to go use a different search engine. So ranking pages is really important. Now, ranking pages has a lot to do today with you you as a user and what the search engine knows about you. Pages you visited in the past, uh, links that you've clicked on when you've done other searches on that engine, all sorts of things like that. So to some degree, search has become very personalized. And if you want to find this out, try opening an incognito window, try using tools that allow you to browse the web from other places on Earth, and you'll see that a lot of the things you search for, a lot of the results are heavily influenced by where you are and what the search engine knows about you as a person. To some degree, that's good. In other ways, that's confining. However, if we peel off that layer, we can still recognize that there is some platonic level at which some pages are better than other web pages. So some web pages are really interesting. They're nicely formatted. They're full of great content. You learn a lot from them or you laugh or whatever. And then there are other pages that are don't you know have very useful information. Um, they're ugly. They don't have the information that you're looking for. They may be full of ads or spam or whatever. So on some level, even if you just think about this artificial platonic user that has no preferences, there is still some notion of a good web page and a bad web page. And base search algorithms that search engines use for a first pass at ranking pages are really designed to try to get at this fundamental difference between page quality between good pages and bad pages. So how does that work? One of the most famous algorithms in this category is something that's called PageRank. And PageRank was something that was uh, developed at Google um, and is actually named after Larry Page. So the page in PageRank is Larry Page, not web page. But page rank is also used to rank web pages. So how does page rank work? What's kind of the fundamental uh, assumption underlying page rank? The fundamental assumption underlying page rank is that a page is important if other pages link to it. Pretty simple. Important pages have a lot of links pointing at them. The more links you have pointing at you, it's sort of a vote from the rest of the internet that this page is interesting, this page is useful. That's one of the ways that collectively on the internet we develop this sort of sense of what's out there and what's useful is that I put a link, if a page is useful, like I use a particular tool or I like a particular article, I might put a link to it on my website. And that boosts that article's uh, reputation a little bit when it's, it's looked at by search engines. Another way to think about the page rank algorithm is in terms of a random walk on the internet. So let's say you started a particular page and you just start clicking on random links on each page you visit. What's the probability that you're going to arrive at a particular page online? If a page has lots of links to it from lots of other pages, you'll get there maybe eventually, um, so the probability will be higher. In contrast, imagine a page that has no links to it. That page is on some level very unimportant because no one has decided to put a link to it, not even the people that maintain the website that that page is part of. So that gives you a sense of, of the, the differences there. Here's a diagram uh, borrowed from Wikipedia, kind of showing uh, a potential result of running the page rank algorithm on a series of web pages. So, you can see over here, so see these pages at the bottom, right? Uh, these pages have, to some degree, the lowest page rank. They're the smallest. The page rank here is represented by the size of these circles. These down here have the lowest page rank, and the reason is no one is linking to them. These pages have no links pointing at them. This page over here has a slightly higher page rank, although it's not very high, because it has one link that's pointing 
at it as opposed to zero. Um, this page, on the other hand, you can see is clearly very important. It has lots of links pointing at it. Now the other thing that, that PageRank, um, you know, the, the random walk part of PageRank sort of points out is the fact that an important page like B, if it links to another page, in this case like C, it's lending some of its importance to C. So the other aspect of PageRank is a page is important, so let me re re complete the diagram, a page is important if important pages link to it. So this page, let's go back to our diagram. This page is important because it has a lot of links pointing at it. This page only has one link pointing at it. So you might ask, why is it almost as important as B? The reason is B is a really important page. And so imagine B is like, you know, the front page of an online newspaper. And B has, uh, you know, uh, set up a link to some uh, blog that was written, an article was written on someone's blog. Well, that page has suddenly become very important. And if you think about the random walk theory of how PageRank works, if I start, let's say I start here. So I start here, I pick a random link, okay, and I'm going to B. And now the thing is, if I pick a random link from B, I'm going to go to C every time because B only has one link. Same thing down here. If I start here, I pick a random link, let's say I go to E. Now let's say I pick a random link out of E, and I'm going to go to F. I pick a random link out of F, I'm going to go to B, and then I'm going to go to C. So you can see that because of the structure of this graph, a lot of these random walks eventually end up at B. And then once they get to B, they only have one place to go. So once they get to B, they're automatically going to go to C, because B only has one link pointed out of it to C. So this illustrates the two parts of the page rank algorithm. One is importance is determined by the number of incoming links. The the other is important pages can sort of, um, you know, sort of speak for the importance of other pages by linking to them. So a page is important because a lot of links point to it, or it's important because important pages link to it.